as one of my first initiatives as Executive Secretary, the importance that I attach uh, to this group uh, cannot be understated. A new group's been formed to push the global ban on nuclear tests forward. Well, to make sure the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty enters into force. And to do that, we've got to get another eight states uh, to, uh, to ratify. And uh, the job of this group is to do whatever it can practically to get those eight states across the line. It's uh, US, and it's China, it's India, and Pakistan. It is uh, Israel, Iran, Egypt, and North Korea. And we need their ratifications, and the question is how. Known as the GEM, this group of eminent persons comprises top-ranking diplomats to political leaders. Well versed in nuclear issues, they share a common will to stop nuclear tests forever. By common consent, the time has come to move from the door being closed and testing nuclear weapons to locking the door so that it can never be reopened. Um, and there's a very small um, number of countries who hold the key to that, but they're a great challenge. The treaty specifies that all nuclear-capable countries at the time it was adopted in 1996 must ratify the treaty before it can enter into force. Some people blame that this non-entry force clause is a mistake, while others have different views, and I belong to the latter group, because if any treaty you know, entry force without the signature or ratification of those critical ones, like the United States, like China, like those steer out, then the treaty may be in force but not useful. Nuclear testing was once perceived as a display of military prowess. Today it's seen as a pariah activity. The odd thing is that none of these states, as far as we know, is really planning any further testing. Maybe the North Koreans in some years' time, who knows, but the others I think not. So why is it then that we cannot get them also to sign on, to bind themselves? You have to take them one by one, really. Uh, they have different sorts of, of difficulties some more of a technical nature, some more of a political nature. Uh, some seem just to be stubborn. <laughs> but this is the, the task of our group to convince them. I think it's in the interest of the people of those eight countries. And in the end, parliaments and governments uh, normally, rationally, take decisions in the interest of their people. Over 90% of the world has already joined the CTBT. Indonesia was the most recent nuclear-capable country to do so. Its foreign minister, Marty Natalagawa, explains why. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's about making a difference. Uh, you know, until 2011, Indonesia has been one of the proponents of CTBT and yet has chosen deliberately not to ratify, although we are an Annex II country, with the hope our abstention will encourage the nuclear weapon states to take the lead. But uh, having gone through a certain period of time, we came to recognition that we must ourselves take the lead. We are very optimistic uh, that a country like Indonesia has ratified the treaty. But also we hear um, uh, that even from the Chinese uh, government that they are waiting for the United States that in the same moment that the United States would submit its ratification, they would immediately submit there. So the, I think there is a lot of uh, hope and a lot of uh, reasons for optimism. If you th ask me do I think this is imminent, I think probably not with the current American balance of politics and its domestic environment. But that doesn't mean there are things that we can't do at the moment. There are things we can do now to anticipate the possibility that we will have in the near future. In 2009 in Prague, US President Obama spoke of his desire to ratify the CTBT. To achieve a global ban on nuclear testing, my administration will immediately and aggressively pursue US ratification of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. After more than five decades of talks, it is time for the testing of nuclear weapons to finally be banned. America was the first country to sign the treaty back in 1996. Well, the United States, uh, as a global leader um, and as uh, the world's remaining superpower, 
It's in America's fundamental national interests uh, to bring about a legal closure to a testing regime for nuclear weapons right across the world. Um, and in terms of America's uh, outstanding concerns as stated back in the 1999 debate, which were about the adequacy of verification processes. The uh, technology of verification across the International Verification Network is now pretty good. Uh, in fact, I'd defy most people to say what can be slipped through. The organisation preparing for the treaty's entry into force, the CTBTO, has built a global verification system. It detects nuclear explosions in the air, sea and land. Around 85% of its 300-plus monitoring stations are up and running. It picked up all three nuclear tests announced by North Korea, the latest in February this year. That would be uh, extremely difficult for anyone to even think of conducting a nuclear explosions or any other explosions. Of course, the latest case is the DPRK. You know, its explosion was condemned, detected certainly by DPA, uh, CTPTO and uh, condemned by practically everyone. So I think uh, the treaty has played its very important role. I think uh, China uh, uh, will be more positive. Uh, recently, uh, the, 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 we know that the new administration under uh, President Xi Jinping, they uh, may shift their approach toward North Korea uh, while pressurizing uh, North Korea to, uh, to give up the, their nuclear weapons program. Within a broader context, I think uh, 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 China will uh, nudge North Korea to go forward. This is a treaty that is in operation without being enforced. It has not legally entered into force, but in practice it works. And you have an organization that works and that is more, 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 more accomplished in verification than anything else we have seen. The group of eminent persons was the idea of the CTBTO Executive Secretary, Lucina Zerbo. He saw the need to inject fresh thinking by those with connections on the ground to move the treaty forward. China has undertaken the commitment not to have any test before they enter into force. You know, that said, you know, China being a signatory only for the time being, they are working very hard on its ratification. ratification. Now, they, it is with the National People's Congress, the legislative body of China. The European countries have a great moral authority to make this argument because we have all ratified and we have supported on a voluntary basis through the EU 40% of the cost of the building of this verification network and this organisation. So we have a strong argument to be able to take across the Atlantic to our cousins in the United States. The group was launched on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York in September 2013. Its focus is to open new paths to ensure the treaty becomes law. The treaty uh, functions, quote unquote, uh, except for, let's say, one country. But you can never know uh, what some other countries might wish to do in the future. So uh, that's why we need international law. That's, uh, that's why we have binding obligations in, 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 in our world. Uh, I am cautiously optimistic because uh, given uh, the recent development uh, uh, when it comes to the Iranian uh, nuclear problems and the Syrian use of uh, chemical weapons, and uh, big powers like uh, Russia and United States are moving forward. So uh, why not to have the same uh, you know, uh, development uh, in the process of uh, CTBT? Bringing it into force is important. The rule of law is important. And also you just leave the possibility that people can do the sorts of things that will take us back into the last century, into an arms race environment, and they can argue that they are legal. It is not against the law for us to do this, whereas all of us believe an essential component of getting to a world that is free of nuclear weapons is stopping testing. Obviously, a world without a CGBT entering into force is a much poorer world and a much less secure world. And this treaty is one of the main uh, instruments in promotion of nuclear disarmament and nuclear non-proliferation. So it is not only a right, but it is also a smart thing to do to create a world that is more peaceful and more stable as well.